Oh, somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Doug is Doug, Bernie, Doug. Yeah. I just want to first of all say I truly enjoyed Bernie this morning. How many people enjoyed that word this morning? I came in. I caught what I needed to hear, Bernie. I truly appreciate the points you gave us. You missed one point. I thought you said there were three points. I only got two of those points. So I need to get that third point for you before you leave here. Two points? All right. Well, I got both of them there. Amen. So it's just good. Thank God for this young man. I've met this brother coming in the door. I'm sitting at the same table with him now. I got your name, Brother Mark. And and uh, he asked, he said, you look like you're on fire or something. I said, it's coffee. It's just coffee. <laughs> it's coffee. Amen. He said, well, let me go get a cup of that coffee then. Amen. But, yeah, God is so good. I want to thank God for this man of God who we are given the opportunity to introduce. I've known Pastor Cece or Apostle Cece for a long time. Uh, he is a man who loves God more than he loves anything. I, I can say that with a true heart. And I'm truly excited about this morning. Doug called me and told me he was going to be our speaker. And I wanted to make sure I was here to support this man of God. Let's receive, if you will, our Apostle Cece Doss. Come on, somebody. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Pastor Christ. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. He's worthy. Oh, come on. We can do better than that for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Hey, yeah, we're going to holiday, man, tomorrow for the Super Bowl, but let's holler for Jesus right now. Amen. <laughs> Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer, we thank you right now. As your word would go forth, that it would Bless and encourage in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that it would be like a fire that burns, a sword that cuts in the name of Jesus, and a hammer that breaks. Lord, that it will lift us up and we will give you the praise and the glory that our lives will never be the same in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Let's give God one more hand clap. We are excited. Good morning. Amen. Brother Doug and Brother Bernie, thank God. That wasn't that a wonderful message that he brought today? Amen. Looking, talking about Job. Some call him Job, but we call him Job. A little songs in my heart as I get ready for the word. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved. A wretch like me, I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Let's give God a praise right there. Hallelujah for the amazing grace. Amen. I'm excited about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. And for his blessings. There's nobody like Jesus. They said, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Nobody could do me like the Lord. Amen. I thank the Lord for coming into my life when he did. The Lord saved me at a tender age. He knew that he couldn't wait till I got 25. <laughs> Because, amen, I wouldn't have had sense enough like some of you to come in. Amen. So he had to get me early. Had he waited to, I got 25 or whatever, I'd be, amen, glory to God, I would have been six foot under or, amen, probably spending life in prison. So the Lord saved me at the age of 12 and filled me with the Holy Spirit at the age of 13. Called me to preach the gospel at the age of 13. He kept me through uh, middle school. Saved through high school, say not that I didn't make no mistakes, glory to God, but amen. Through a few years of college, till we got a couple degrees saved, and I'm saved right now and still enjoying it. Hallelujah! I told you he had to get me early because if he didn't, amen, he would have missed me altogether. So I fell in love with him at a young age. So I don't know what you know, drugs is cigarettes and any alcohol, Morgan David, MD 2020, Johnny Walker Red, <laughs> Cuddy Sark, old granddad, glory to God. None of that stuff. I don't know what it tastes like. My wife is the only woman I know sexually. And next week we'll be celebrating 33 years. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! And next to Jesus, she's the best thing that ever happened to me. So I'm excited about the goodness of the Lord and I'm excited about his blessing. We're going to the book of Luke. Uh, 18th chapter, amen, glory to God. We do have a 
a song project that's out, and you can get it on Amazon Music, uh, glory to God, Apple Music, YouTube, and Pandora, glory to God, a project. It's called Cause I Can, so you can look it up, C.C. Doss, Cause I Can, it'll come right up. It's a music project, it'll be a blessing to you. Say amen. amen. All right, here we have here today, the word of God will speak to us. Here it says in Luke 18 and 1, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Again, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. One more. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So this is telling us the importance of prayer. And that's what we're going to be talking about for these few moments that we have today. Amen. The power of prayer and the importance of prayer. Amen. Glory to God. We find that our Savior Jesus was a man of prayer. Glory to God. The mightiest force in the world is prayer. Prayer have healed more bodies than all the hospitals that you can name. Right. Prayer have put more marriages back together than all the marriage counselors that you could shake a stick at. Prayer have healed more bodies and have brought more blessings to people. Amen. If man will pray, yeah. God will move. If man will pray, God will save. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. We can find that uh, the father of our country, uh, George Washington, was a man of prayer. Amen. When he was fighting one time, history tells us, glory to God that he was on his horse, amen, and they shot three holes in his coat, and it never got him. Holland, they shot horses off from under him. It got the horse, but it didn't get George Washington. He was a praying man. Glory to God, hallelujah. Our Savior Jesus was a man of prayer. Amen, in Mark 1 and 35 it says, and in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out into a solitary place and there prayed. Again, Jesus would get up early in the morning, sometimes before the break of day, and go out into a solitary place and commune with his Father because he knew the power of prayer. Amen. And since we're Christians following Jesus, that wouldn't be a good, bad idea for us sometime. Amen. The Word of God lets us know Jesus taught about prayer. And he said that when you pray, be not as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue, that they might be seen of men, that they might be seen of men. Glory to the name of the Lord. So we see that even hypocrites pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All the <laughs> Amen. He said they love to pray. Amen. Glory to God. But they're not really making communication with God. All the world religions pray. Muslims pray three times a day. Islam pray five times a day. Christians pray. Uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just yesterday, my wife and I, we were, she had to go to a convenience store on her, on her break or lunch, getting something to eat, and she went into a convenience store, and they also uh, prepared food uh, in there. You could get a a sub sandwich or, or something like that or 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 a, or a salad or whatever amen and she stayed in there so long while i was waiting in the car said it doesn't take that long to uh to make a sub sandwich glory to god and make that that long to get a get a salad out of there glory to god hallelujah and when she came out a long time later she explained to me she said well the man that makes the salads and and, and the, the does all of that was back there praying and he couldn't come out until he got through praying. And he was praying, but uh, he wasn't praying to Jehovah God. <laughs> he wasn't praying to Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Glory to the name of the Lord. He was praying to another God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What if we had that type of dedication? To stop business sometime. Glory to God and praise and give God the glory. I was in St. Louis once, amen, and I was... Uh, at a mall, buying something from a mall, amen. And I said, well, I'm in here now, but I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to buy this right now because I'm just coming to the mall, so I'm going to shop around. If I like it, just hold it for me. They said, well, look, well, don't come back at 2 o'clock because at 2 o'clock, the Muslims are praying. 
shout hallelujah. So they were dedicated to praying, amen, hallelujah, to an unseen demon God. Amen. Hallelujah. How much more should we be dedicated to praying to the Lord Jesus and praying to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Let's give Jesus a hand clap right now. Hallelujah. Prayer is... Woo, I feel the power of God. Hallelujah. Excuse me. If y'all mind if I just beat myself, that's how I do on Sunday morning. All right. Hallelujah. Prayer is connecting with God. Let's say that. Prayer is connecting with God. Tell your neighbor, say prayer, prayer. is connecting, connecting is connecting with God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's connect with him right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Bless his holy name. Prayer is communicating with God. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. There are many types of prayers. Amen. Glory to God. Not every prayer is the prayer of petition. Most people think every time you get on your knees, glory to God, you say, Lord, help me. Lord, bless me, my four, and no more. God, my name is Jimmy, and I'll take all that you give me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless us that. So, therefore, we think prayer is always petition. But there are many other types of prayers that are not petitions. Amen. What did Adam, what type of prayer did Adam pray when he met with God in the cool of the evening every day? It couldn't have been the prayer of petition, brothers. It couldn't have been the prayer of petition. Amen. So what did he pray if he wasn't begging God for anything? Couldn't have been the prayer of petition. Because glory to the God. Hallelujah. He could, amen. He couldn't have been praying, Lord, pay my light bill. <laughs> amen. Because he had the eternal light. He couldn't have been praying, Lord, give me some clothes. Because the Bible said they were naked and they were not ashamed. <laughs> so he couldn't have been praying, Lord, give me some food. Because they had thousands of trees to eat off of, all but the one. Shout hallelujah. He couldn't have been praying, Lord, give me a wife. Because he had the most beautiful woman in the world. Matter of fact, she was the only woman in the world. <laughs> he couldn't have been praying, Lord, save my children. Because at one time, there was no children. So if he had none of these things to pray for, and he wasn't petitioning God for anything, well, then what type of prayer did he pray with God? It must have been the God of the prayer of worship. The prayer of praise. Lord, I just thank you. Lord, I just love you. God, I just magnify you. I don't need anything. I just come because I love you. I just come because you're good. Lord, I thank you for that giraffe over there. I thank you for that lion over there. I thank you for that gorilla over there. I thank you for all the goodness things. I thank you, Lord. Lord, I just thank you because you are God. Let's give God that type of praise right now. Yeah, the power of prayer. Prayer is a close, God wants us to have a close, personal, intimate relationship with him. Let's say that close, close personal, personal, intimate, intimate relationship, relationship with God. God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. David said in Psalms 42, he said, amen, as a deer panteth after the water brook. So panteth my soul after thee. We should have a, such a close relationship with God that we love him more than we love anything else or anybody else. He said, amen, to have, as a deer panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. So that deer is panting after that water brook. <laughs> he wants that water because he knows, glory to God, if he don't get that water, that he's going to die. Glory to God. We should have that type of hunger and have that type of thirst after the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. David told, oh, I feel the power of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> David told him, he said, that one thing have I desired, and amen, and that will I seek after, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God all the days of my life and be in the presence of the Lord. David was a king. David was a musician. David was a songwriter. David was a world-class leader, the, one, the greatest king of his day. But amen, hallelujah, out of all of his responsibilities, David said, glory to God, hallelujah, if I don't get to do nothing else in this day, if I don't get to meet with my court, if I don't get to meet, glory to God, and go out to war, if I don't get to meet to do anything else, long as I get in the presence of the Lord, it's the most important thing. And then Jesus backed it up, glory to God, amen, in Matthew 6. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the rest of these things shall be added unto you. Come on, let's say the power of prayer. Power of prayer. 
Jim Cimbala in his book. Amen. Holler the pastor of the Brooklyn um, Tabernacle Church in New York. Hallelujah. Say, a man came in his church one day. They were praying. Amen. And uh, left a revelation. He said, you can tell how popular a church is by who comes on Sunday morning. You can tell how popular a pastor is by who comes on Sunday night. But you can tell how popular Jesus is by who comes to the prayer meeting. Amen. Oh, my God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. The condition of a church may be accurately gauged by the prayer meeting. Prayer is the main business of the church. Tell your neighbor, say prayer is back in style. Say it again. Say, prayer is back in style. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Once the Lord gave me to go on a fast, amen, and he went, said, go seven days. And God blessed me to go seven days without any food, without any water. I shut in three days of that fast. Glory to God. And didn't even come out to use the bathroom. But when I come out of that fast, there was so much power from praying and seeking God. I just went to church and just waved my hand like that. And pretty much the whole church just fell out in the spirit. It's something when we get in the presence of the Lord. Another time, it looked like the Lord said, go 10 days. Glory to God. This time he said, use water. Amen. And I thought he meant take baths. Amen. No, he meant, man, drink some water. Amen. But on the 10th day of it, glory to God, amen, I collapsed. And my prayer, parents have to pray me back to life. Amen. I'm here to let you know, don't go 10 days with no water. Come on, say amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. If God tell you to use water. Amen. But after that fast, signs start happening. Miracles start happening. Great things start happening. Amen. When you seek God. Come on, let's say there's power, there's power. in prayer. prayer. I'm almost finished here. Glory to the name of the Lord. But Jesus was a man of prayer. He was one that loved people. So let's remember here, amen, there's ruling power in prayer. Sometimes we forget how powerful prayer is. Who gets saved and who goes to hell depends on prayer. Whose marriage makes it and whose marriage fails, a lot of time depends on prayer. The one that's praying and holding on to it, they'll make it. Amen. Whose church grows and whose church closes depends on prayer. It all depends on prayer. Has that much power. Whose children get saved and whose children go to hell? Many times depend on prayer. Who's praying for those kids? Who refused to let them go no matter how bad they get? No matter how bad they cut up and clown and do? Glory to God, you just hold on to God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, like the pastor, amen, last month was talking about, Pastor Johnson. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Who gets healed and who stays sick? Many times depends on prayer. So prayer is the most powerful force in the world. Give God a hand clap. Praise the name. So keep on praying. Keep on watching God and watch God do great things in your life. Father God, we thank you right now. We give you the praise and the glory. God, we thank you, Lord, that you've given us the key. Prayer is the key and faith unlocks the door. Glory to God, we pray for our country. We pray for our nation. We pray for our city. We pray, Lord God, for our church. We pray for our families, Lord. And as we venture into 2023, that you would do a great and mighty thing in the midst of your people. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for healing in this place right now. Anyone that is sick in your body, just lay your hand on that ailment right now. And we believe God to take away the pain in the name of Jesus. Amen. That chest that's been hurting, that back. Amen. That right leg that you've been having stiffness in. Glory to God. God is touching you right now. That's arthritic spirit. Glory to God has to go in the name of Jesus. Right now, we claim the healing power of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Someone here that don't know Jesus as your Savior. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Or you're not sure that 100% sure that if you died now, you spend eternity with Jesus. You can be sure. Ask him into your heart. Let's say, Lord Jesus. I believe that you died on the cross and rose again on the third day. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. I give my life to you. And with your help, I'm going to walk and follow you in Jesus' holy name. I love you, Lord. Come on, say amen. Let's give God a praise right now. God bless you.